Hey folks, it's Three Peak Cyclocross season and today you're welcome to Jake who is taking part in the cyclocross race for the first time and I thought this video would be really, really useful because Jake, you have put a ton of preparation and training into this and it's been really, really inspiring. I thought what a great opportunity to come along and chat about it and as you get ready for your race, hopefully this will, this will be useful. So, um, your first time, what inspired you to sign up? Well, I mean, I've always wanted to do it really. I've had because I couldn't, so the last time it ran was 2019. Yeah, a long and, time ago. Yeah. And I wasn't, I was too young to ride it then, because yeah. you have to be uh, 17 to do it, and I was too young. And I've, I've had a couple of mates who've done it, and I've, I've raced cross for eight years now. Yeah, yeah, for a long time. And so it's and just- Pretty good at it. Well, it's, you do I, right. I, get, I get on. Yeah. But um, it's just one of those, it's kind of one of those like mythical events really, that's like, it's so different to everything else. I've just always wanted to have a crack at it. And this has been the first time it's, it's rolled around that I've been able to sign up, so I'm really. And you're gonna be one of the youngest in the field. Yeah. By, by, by a long way. So it's, uh, and there's a lot of experience in the field as we know uh, this year, looking through the entry list, there's definitely a who's who up there, isn't there? So it's all good. So your, your training then, um, I know that you've been, you, tra you train pretty hard anyway, you've been doing some big epic 200k back in June, um, you ride about eight hours a week anyway, but what have you been doing in the last few weeks to get ready for, for this? So what I've, what I've really changed to what I would do usually is I've started running, um, I've never been a big fan of running, it's, it hurts, it's, it's crap, and it's just, <laughs> it just it makes me upset, um, but I, I just, I, and then, you know, you can, you'll listen to people like Nick Craig and stuff say you don't run in the three peaks, you, do, you walk because it's so hard. Yeah. But yeah. that kind of resistance and understanding of just being able to know where my body lies in kind of the physical foot sense. Yeah. Have you I'm, been running in your trainers or have you been trying to run in your cleats or? Uh, a bit of both. Bit of both. Mostly yeah. trainers without the bike. Um, but in the last couple of weeks, I've just been practicing, you know, carrying the bike and all that sort of stuff and making sure I'm used to the kind of different strains and stresses that you have in the race. And have you found that you've got that sort of cyclist adapting to running doms afterwards? <laughs> Has that yeah. got easier and easier? Yeah, hundred percent. The first, like the first couple of weeks was horrendous. It was like, I'd, I'd go running for 30 minutes and I, w I wouldn't be able to walk the next day. And so, <laughs> but, all relate to that. but it's really, it's got a lot better and I've got a lot more used to it. I still don't enjoy it, but yeah. it's, it's not so bad. And of course you've been, um, cross season has started again. You've done your first two races already, which have been pretty good. So your skills are up there. You've been working on your skills all summer as well. So feeling confident with descending stuff. That's all good. And other sports specific stuff, you've been out and done some recce in. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So I've walked all the, all the parts of the route basically. Yeah. So I've walked Ingleborough, I've walked Wernside and I've walked Penny Ghent. And then last weekend, I went and rode the bits that you're allowed to ride. So most of the time, most of the course is footpath, so you can only ride it on race day. But there's the bottom of Wernside and the bottom of Penny Ghent that you're allowed to ride. So I went and did that last weekend. I mean, that's awesome. And we've got the luxury of it not being that far away. But what have you, what have you learned from that? What have you been, any times when you stopped and gone, oh, actually, that's a really good line, or I'm not sure about that. What's, what stands out? Yeah, so the first couple of times I walked it, so I walked it with my dad. He's not, he's not raced it before, but he's, he's very much a, an outdoors man. Yeah, so we, it, yeah. <laughs> so we, um, so we sort of scoped out, scoped out like a lot of, um, essentially, basically what what was going to happen, um, like where you go and all that sort of stuff, and just looking on bits that kind of look difficult and technical. Is there a way around it, or is there kind of uh, a different line to take, essentially? And then that was kind of what I was putting into practice uh, uh, last weekend when I went and rode it. And what's the feels? What what are you when you now you've sort of seen the whole course? Are you? I feel a little bit more confident actually. Yeah. Um, I was kind of bricking it about two weeks ago, um, but now I've kind of gone and ridden it, I actually feel a little bit more comfortable. Easier in... or harder than a normal cyclocross? cross? Or... Oh, 10 times, 100 times harder, 1,000 right. times. Okay. It's, it's, it's very different. There's some, in... steep, there's some steep sections there, aren't there? Yeah. Okay, um, other preparation, um, we're gonna get onto your bikes in a second. I know these two are looming in the background and, and I don't spend quite a lot of time on that, but we'll get to it, uh, I promise. But I wanna talk about nutrition, because it's something that's gonna be uh, really high on your list, I guess, because it's cyclocross, an hour-ish yep. worth of racing, your road racing, an hour and a half-ish worth of racing. You're looking for a time under four hours, so this is gonna put a new element of endurance onto young legs. So what have you been learning about nutrition so far for doing these longer 200K rides? So I've never really taken much of a keen interest into nutrition. I've just kind of bombed about eating whatever's in my pockets and just kind of cracked on. You've had a, but, few, had a few bonks. Oh, yeah, many in my time. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm an experienced bonker. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I've kind of realized that it is, obviously it's very important. I've tried to just 
just take it a little bit more seriously yeah. in that I've been kind of testing out all the different kind of gels and bottles and all that sort of stuff and just kind of working out where, where my limits are essentially in to what I need. So uh, two weeks ago I did the Old Hutton Road Race, which was three hours long and yeah. it was full gas right from the start. Yeah. And I, I... Can we just say sixth place finish? Sixth place. Sixth, awesome. But what, what happened was I essentially, I don't think I ate quite enough because I got, I didn't eat quite enough. I didn't drink quite enough because I got absolutely horrendous cramp with 500 meters to go and couldn't move my legs. So I had to sit on the side of the road to recover. So- um, I still ended up sick. Still ended up sick. Good. So I was fairly pleased with that. But, um, but yeah, it's kind of, kind of knowing, because I've never really done, I've never done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm just gonna load up essentially with as much stuff as possible and try to eat as much as possible to avoid that kind of situation. Yeah, of course, and I think one of the reasons you don't see people of a younger age doing these big endurance events because they haven't really spent the time in the saddle building up a big, strong aerobic brace like someone like Nick Craig or Rob Jeb have, you know, the big names in the sport. Um, so you're very still quite a carbohydrate dependent athlete at the moment, which is uh, which is perfectly normal. But you've been doing some calculations here about 60 to 70 grams of carbohydrate you're yeah. working on. That's based on your experience of what you do at that sort of intensity. So. Yeah. How are you, how are you planning, I mean, it's 60 grams is quite a lot to digest, but you've been working on this, haven't yeah. you? So how are you planning on getting that 60 to 70 grams of carbohydrate or what's the? So my, I think my main, my main intake will be from, intake will be from bottles. So something like a Torque Energy mix, they yeah. have 30 grams of carbs in one of those mix. They taste pretty good as well. So that's, yeah. that's always a bonus. Yeah. Um, well, I, I suppose actually it probably starts before the race, doesn't it? When you wake up in the morning. Um, I generally like yeah. to have porridge, banana, and a bit of orange juice for breakfast, a yeah. bit of sugar, and kind of try and get that kind of slow absorption. And then um, I try to drink a full bottle of SOS Beta Fuel before the race. Yeah, um, that's powerful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I find I can't drink that in races because it's just a bit too thick and a bit too strong. Yeah, I think it definitely has that acidic thing, doesn't it? You kind of can almost feel a bit too sickly sweet. You want to dilute it a little bit, I think. Yeah, so that's good knowledge. Yeah, yeah and then um, and then I'll try to go through. So this is this is from Nick Craig directly. Um, he did a podcast with the Edge Coaching, and he yeah. went through his whole nutrition strategy. So I've kind of I base it a little bit off that, but I think I'm going to try and eat a bit more than he does, just because mm -hmm. I think that's kind of my personal take from that. Yeah, that's and good. Yeah. So I'll start with a bottle. Uh, with of torque energy and probably have a gel on the start line. Okay, so it's a 500 bit of torque energy with about 30 gram chassis, yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then into gel every 30 minutes, about yes. 25 grams, yeah. So we're getting there, aren't we? And then yeah. some extra sort of cliff bot blocks or something yeah. like that. And yeah. then you've got some support at road stations as well. Do you think there's going to be some sort of savory cheese or something a bit more? Yeah, alkaline? probably maybe. Yeah, probably <laughs> something a bit more solid, maybe around around sort of cold coats and maybe at the bottom of Wernside as well as you go on the road sections. Yeah. Just because off road, there's no chance you're going to be able to eat. Yeah. It's just so. Any of the best chance you've got, if that really. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think you're having something that's a bit more uh, alkaline on yes. the palate is going to be good around those things. Uh, that's that's really interesting. Now, how are you going to carry it? What's your um, have you got a method? Because obviously you're going to be on the bike, rough riding. You're going to carry. What's what's your strategy for trying to carry and consume? So for bottles, um, as you know, on most bikes will have two bottle cage mounts. One on the um, on the down tube and yep. one on the seat on the seat tube. Yeah. Um, so I'm putting my bottles on the seat tube um, because on the down tube they get in the way when you're carrying the bike. Yeah. Because you hook your arm through the frame. Um, so on on the seat tube when it's yep. on the back like that. Yeah. Um, it just stays out of the way a bit better. Um, and also when you're kind of rattling around descents and stuff like that, they're a bit less likely to fall out as well. Yeah, I, th I think so, yeah. So you're just gonna have one bottle at any one time. Yep. You've got support where you should yes. see. Yeah, I've got my mum and dad and my sister on the side of the road, so yeah, should I think be able to refill. Yeah, as well as well. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> throw, throw what we can in there. So that's, that's good. And then obviously you'll have a handful. And are you gonna put them in your back pockets? Yes. And just... Yeah, so I'm probably gonna go for a couple of gels in my back pockets. But I know because I'm because I'm right-handed, I carry my bike on my right shoulder. Yeah. I can't put anything in my right pockets when I'm carrying my bike because yeah. it just it just crushes it. Yeah. So I have to have everything in my left-hand pockets. Yeah. And I'll pr I might even go for a uh, gel sort of tape to the um, tape to the top tube at some point as well, just to kind of keep that get that sort of extra thing in where you're not having to grab it off the side of the road yeah, and like stuff like that. So the gel explodes in your pocket and you go and put your hand in it and it's just like <laughs> now you've got a stick there. Yeah. Yeah. You do well to think about those little details. So so on your left-hand pocket you've got your food. 
in your middle pocket is going to be tool, multi tool, multi tool, that sort of thing. So you're going to carry that on you rather than carry it yes. on the bike. Okay? Yeah, because uh, yeah, because I'll be swapping bikes as I'm sure we'll get on to later. Yeah. So I think it's important just to know that you've got that kind of stuff on hand um, when you need it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then in the other pocket, that's going to be what just waterproof jacket yeah. or something. Yeah. So the, I think it's by the discretion of the organisers whether you have to carry a jacket or not on the day. Yeah. Um, forecast is currently dry, so I'm hoping I'm not going to have to take one. Yeah. But, but you've got just... if but if I do, then it's going in the right pocket. Yeah, that's good. And then on your bike, you're going to carry that survival shelter. You've yep. got some, are you going to carry a survival shelter on every bike that you've got? Yes. So it's always, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to take that to the bottom of the seat tube. Yep. Um, or to the bottom of the seat post rather, and um, and then possibly go for a CO2 canister on the seat post as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that will make sense. I mean, just quick release. Make sure there's a little tabs so you get off the gloves and that sort of thing. That's great. So, um, okay, on to these bikes then. So you're taking two bikes. Yep. And you've got support, like we said, and we've got so. This is your brand spanking new bike, which we're just so proud of. We might even do a separate video on this because it's so cool. Yeah. Um, but you're going to start off on your Cannondale Supercross. Yes. So what you're going to start on. Yeah. Okay. So what's the, what's the thinking behind this? What's what's the setup you've done you've done here? Cool. So I have I've really essentially gone overboard on this okay. in the fact <laughs> that I have I've studied everything down to the minute detail and I'm really trying to be as best prepared as possible. Yeah. So I've got my so the start of the race is you start at uh, Helwith Bridge and you have a neutralized road section for about five kilometers. Mm -hmm. And then you turn onto Ingleborough and it's a grass grass up and then there's a lot of carrying, a fair bit of riding, and then it's a grass descent down to Coldcoats. So I have got uh, my Challenge Lemus mud tires on there and they are my absolute favorite cyclocross tires ever yeah. to exist. Um, and I've also got some tire inserts in there. So if you've heard of Cushcore before, um, I've not got actual Cushcore ones because they- the Victoria ones. Yes. Think, so, so. And interestingly, you've got their 33 wide written on the side. Yeah. And they're matted up to the Passetti fours. Is the, yeah. the aluminium ones? Yes, yeah. they're the aloe ones. Yeah. So, they, so what do they actually measure? So those are those are thirty three mil tires written on the sidewall, but they yeah. actually measure at thirty six and a half millimeters. So you're well and truly legal by the regulations, which is thirty five max. Yeah, yeah. thirty five written on the sidewall. Yeah, so you're well below that in terms of, and they do stipulate what's written, not necessarily what's measured. Yeah. So a combination of a, a wide rim and those tire inserts really blow them out, don't they? And they look they look pretty aggressive as well. Yes. So. So this is to get you through the muddy sections up until Coldcoats. This is uh, over Ingleborough, yep. Coldcoats, and then you're going to switch to um, the lovely to, form to, to this fantastic beach. We'll get some close-ups of these. Yeah. So this is, I mean, these look almost like slick tyres. So. Yes. So I've got the Pirelli Cinturato uh, gravel hards on there. Um, so they are really quite aggressive. Um, I was umming and arm, well, umming and arm on my tyre choice for quite a while on this. I think, I think everyone probably is. And yeah. I hope this video is going to be useful because you've yes. put a lot of thought into this. Yeah. Um, in, mainly down to kind of the weather as well, um, yeah. because these they, these tires I'm sure will show you, but they are very very slick. So they'll be really fast on the road sections. But after you come off Ingleborough, there is essentially very it's essentially all road and gravel. Mm -hmm. So I, I almost put a, a medium or a mixed tire on the front, but I thought you know it's going to be dry. I want to go really fast, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna send it and see, yeah. see what happens. So your fast bike essentially is um, going to take you all the way almost back to Horton, I guess. Are you going to yes. switch bikes again or are you going to stay on that no, remainder? No, so I'm going to, if it all goes to plan, I'm going to stick on that bike for the, for the rest of the race. Yeah. Um, but if I, get, if I get mechanicals and stuff like that, so we actually have a, lucky enough to have a third bike um, <laughs> that we've had for quite a while. It's an old Planet X, but I'll chuck some uh, intermediate tires like a Baby Lemus or something on that that my dad's gonna ride around the course so he can give me bottles and stuff like that. And then if I need it, I can, um, I can jump onto that either at the, at the start or end of Wernside. Yeah. Um, and then I'll be taking, and then my mum uh, will be taking the um, Supercross to the bottom of Penny Ghent in case I have a mechanical somewhere in the middle of okay, that. Okay, so you've got the option of getting back on your, your, yes. your that bike as well for, for, for Penny Ghent as well. So yeah, I mean, that's, um, I mean, the support I think is gonna be really important. I mean, all the, the, the guys that are successful in this have yeah, consider about the support. There's always been talk about switching to road bikes in the past, but I mean, what you've built here is, I mean, the gearing on this is slightly faster as well. Uh, no, so they've got they've both got the same gear ratio on. Okay. So I've got a 42 tooth uh, chainring at the front, and yeah. then I'm running an 11 42 cassette on the back of both of them. Yeah. Okay. So you've still got that nice low one to one ratio, but and you've got the SRAM on one, <laughs> yeah, the Shimano on the other. Yeah. So luckily, you're not spending too much time on this one to to, to worry about that transition. But um, yeah, I think that's um. I mean, the, the thought that you put into this is, is absolutely insane. So what's the strategy? So race, you don't know where you're gonna be seeded yet. No. Um, so you, you're, you wanna get under four hours, you wanna be competitive. Um, so I guess you need to be somewhere near the, hoping to get somewhere in the front. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, what's, what's, the, um, what's the game plan? 
Uh, I think my plan is, I mean, historically, because I, so I've, I've, because I've not trained sort of massively for this. I've, I've kept it fairly quiet. You know, I've been doing sort of eight hours a week or so, which is, you know, it's a reasonable amount, but it's not, it's not big numbers. Mm -hmm. So I think my main concern will be the endurance. Yeah. So I want to be sort of conservative at the start, really. And especially because the kind of the ascent of Simon's Fell up Ingleborough is the most alien to me in the fact that it's basically just a vertical grass wall mm -hmm. that you're walking up. So I think I really do want to just chill at the start, make sure I'm not making any silly mistakes early on and try and just concert and just, just not sort of overdo it. Yeah, I think that's a sensible way of doing it for your first time. Um, I don't be difficult to challenge from the, for the win from there. But that's not that's not my goal. <laughs> no, you just get under four hours. I think there's going to be a big bottleneck uh, near the start, isn't there? And I think yes. If you're not through that bottleneck and keeping the leaders in on the horizon, it's going to be difficult to catch. I mean, the the, win, the winners will probably go under three this year because it's dry. It's mm -hmm. it'll be really fast. So I think yeah, I'll be. I'm not going to be. I'm not aiming to touch those guys. Okay. No, this is your first time, so it's just to get getting that getting those getting that experience and, and learning and stuff. So. I mean, the nice thing is if you really do it faster, you don't have to carry quite as much food. And, yes. You know, there's, there's, lots of, there's lots of advantages. But yeah, being able to take it seriously. Um, and then if you feel good, crack on. Put the hammer down and, yep. see, what, and see, what, see what's in the tank. And there's always many, many more years to come. So that sounds really, really sensible. So yeah, good luck. If you see Jake out on the field, um, give him a thumbs up, give him a, a ride on, and uh, wish him luck. But yeah, from all of us, we'll be out there supporting you all the way. So thank you very much. If all you've done so far is get here, this is amazing the amount of work you put in. Well done, and then just wish you success on the day. Yeah, awesome. Right. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found that useful.